Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest Railroad. Well, we're working on the little steam engine today, and I have a few projects that need to get done, so I hope you can join me. Well, welcome back to the shop. We've got a couple of projects going on today. So the steam dome was one of them. This cap goes on here like this. It's bolted in and then the decorative steam dome comes over the top. And this mechanism here, which I'll give you a close up in a second, regulates the steam. It's like stepping on the accelerator on your automobile. And let's look at the back of the locomotive and I'll show you the lever for that. So here's the throttle arm. That's the full closed. And that's open. And right now I actually have it twisted and bolted on backwards. And I'll explain why I did that in just a second. But let's look back in the steam dome and you can see what happens when I open this throttle. Okay, this little mechanism, this is all under steam pressure when you have the boiler fired up and so this cap has to be secure. And if you see this little metal tab, so what's going on here is you've got steam at, you know, 80, 90 PSI in here and you have to regulate it to get down to the wheels. And so by advancing that lever that we looked at a minute ago, watch what happens here. You can see that piece of metal starts to move and boom, it opens up this orifice here. And when this is fully open, now we have maximum steam going into this port here, down through a tube, through the smoke box and down into the cylinders. So one little side project, I put a little bit of steam oil lubrication on this just so that I could move it easily enough because normally it's got steam um, wet steam as a lubricant. So it's a little stiff without any pressure in here. So I put a little steam oil in on the advice of my friend Bob. And notice here though, this surface and, and this, when I took it off, it was just about metal to metal. So I think what I'm gonna do is create a gasket. If there was, it looks like there may have been some remnants of a gasket on there, but there really wasn't much of it left. It was pretty much metal to metal and that's not ideal. So let's uh, cut a gasket and when we put this back together it'll be a proper seal. We'll do that over on the workbench in just a minute. But before we do that let's take another look at the throttle mechanism. What I did was I undid this bolt and I pulled this throttle arm off and I actually rolled it 180 degrees. And the reason I did that was because of this mechanism here. What was happening is this pin, when this is rotated 180 and that pin goes in this slot, as soon as you would open the throttle, then this mechanism moved a piston in this valve. I'm assuming I haven't torn the valve apart but this actually automatically turned the blower off as you advance the throttle. But for right now, I just would rather have total manual control over the blower while I learn. So I reverse this bar so this pin is not connected in this fancy pants mechanism that auto controls the blower. Hopefully this will be defeated. And here you can see the lubricator. I've got some paper towel stuffed in there right now. I've taken a little syringe and I've sucked out all the thick steam oil that I had in the lubricator here so that I can roll the locomotive over on its side and not make a horrible mess. That's the next thing I have to do after we get the steam dome attached. One thing I have to care for in this locomotive that became evident when we actually steamed it up. We didn't run it. It was on the steaming bay and we just ran the wheels in place. But it seemed like I was not able to divert water from the axle pumps underneath, which are trying to pump water into the boiler whenever the wheels are moving. I wasn't able to defeat those and have them send 
overflow into back into these tanks and so what was happening is the boiler was constantly being fed a little bit too much water. The valve that is supposed to divert the water from the boiler back into the tanks doesn't seem to be working. So I gotta trace that down and see what's going on. That's one of the last things I have to do before we could actually build a fire and try to run it here on the Crow's Nest Railroad. If I get a successful steam up and running here, then I'll go ahead and rebuild all the cosmetics and put everything back together but i'm just going to leave the raw locomotive like this for a first test run all right well since i've not done a lot of these things before you can see i made a quick drawing when i pulled this cap off the steam dome just in case someone had to possibly re-thread and put a different size bolt in there for some reason during the locomotive's history. So I drew a little diagram and orientation, and then I pulled each little bolt out, each little stud, and put it in its proper place just in case. And it looks like the only difference is in this, maybe this one doesn't have brown paint on the top of it. That's about all that I can see. But anyway, when you're brand new and just learning safety first, label everything. The threads and the size of the components on this locomotive are really tiny and it would be very easy for me to over torque something and ruin it. So now on to the next step. I cleaned this little surface out here and we've got to create a gasket for this so that it can mate up with the boiler again. So I roughly cut out a circle out of some gasket material. Here it is and that is roughly the outside diameter of this flange. Now I have to cut a hole in it that's equal to the inside diameter of the flange or the outside diameter of the cylinder. So I thought maybe I could take some magic marker and rub it on there and then put this down on this paper material and tap it a little bit, but it did not transfer. So next I'm gonna try just putting some more wet paint sort of a deal. Maybe I'll get some black paint or something and just quickly put some on there and try and transfer that down to give me an idea of where to make my cuts on that gasket material. All right, got a little bit of spray paint. Q-tip. Got the rim wet. Okay, I think I see that well enough that I can cut that out. All right, let's see if it fits. All right, now we have to perforate it for those holes. Now, since this was machined out by hand, I can't totally rely on the fact that these holes might be perfectly spaced from one another. In other words, geometrically perfect. So I marked the back of the small dome and I marked the back of the gasket so that if the whole pattern is slightly asymmetrical, I can get it oriented just right because of my markings. All right, that's buttoned up nicely. All right, I got the loco over on its side. Let's look up underneath at the axle pumps. Okay, here are the two eccentrics. This is the front axle. And these run into these two water pumps. And every time the loco wheels are moving, these pumps are working. 
there's like a double ball valve in each one of these units and you can see the output of these is teed off and it runs up and it's controlled by another valve it's this little handle right here this controls a valve that's about halfway down this tank and its job is to control how much water gets diverted from those pumps instead of back into the boiler recirculating back into the tanks and that's the valve that seems to be suspect when we fired this up before it seemed like we could never get those pumps to feed back into the tanks they were always pushing fresh water cold water into the boiler so rather than tear into these which I think must be working or we wouldn't have an overfilling problem I'm going to get into that valve that's behind the tank sorry about the shaky camera I've got it off the tripod also you can see here this is kind of interesting this connection here that runs off of this eccentric and this runs the oil pump which lubricates the cylinders can you see that down in there that's the valve that we have to get to and check and all right here's the port side water tank the restriction is not in this side of the plumbing or this side so let me attack this valve here's that valve now I pulled this out this little nut here is kind of a tensioning nut and it looks like there may be a little grommet let me pull this off and you can see this whole deal unscrews never seen the inside of this before okay so you can see the little tip in there and that goes in there into the seat and blocks the flow so when I blow through this just putting it on my lips I can blow air easily through there so it's not blocked and as this thing goes in there it seats and blocks it off and I tested that so what is going on well so this little guy may be the culprit this little wheel as I think that I am turning to open the valve what I'm actually doing is turning off the wheel so it may be as simple as putting a little Loctite 542 on this thread let that set up make sure the shaft is not too tight with this capture nut here and the valve should be able to open and close as long as I don't super tighten it all right tank is back on everything is plumbed up and connected well that's going to do it for this video hopefully fingers crossed the next time that we see tiny tim here on video he'll be steamed up that's the plan anyway he's not all put back together again i want to steam him up make sure he runs on the track okay and everything's working obviously and that he'll make the sharp turns that I have here at the Crow's Nest Railroad. When I first bought this locomotive, I didn't know for sure, first of all, that it would work, and second of all, that it would be able to negotiate the tight turns that my other little Rodney locomotive in the cars can. That's still a question that has to be solved. Plus, there might be some problems here that I don't know about yet. But anyway, Fingers crossed, like I said, hopefully the next time you see Tiny Tim here on camera, he'll be hot and pulling on the track. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I know it was kind of technical, but I really appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you right here next time. <laughs>